Hello, this is Pastor Steven Anderson from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. And today we're going to be talking about John 14, 6. This is John 14, 6 from the Greek New Testament. I've got the Textus Receptus from the Trinitarian Bible Society, the uh, Greek text underlying the King James Bible. So we're going to go through this word by word. Uh, hopefully you already watched the video on John 1, 1. Hopefully you already memorized John 1, 1. But let's go ahead and go through this word by word. Uh, the first word here... Legi afto oisus, ego imi iodos, kei alithia, kei zoe, udis ergete pros ton patera i mi diemu. All right? So uh, again, you should know the alphabet and you should be able to understand that these accent marks tell you where to put the stress on each word. So let's go through this word by word. And let me give you some tips for memorizing this verse and also just understanding what the words mean uh, for a total beginner. Legi, all right? Legi here means says or saith, right? So you say, well, that's kind of a weird word to start the verse with. You know, starting with the verb is not something that we would do when we speak English, right? But again, as I said in the other video, uh, word order in Greek is a lot more fluid. I mean, you can move things around and it doesn't really change the meaning. And so it starts with the verb here, legi, which is saith, afto, which means to him, o isus. Now the word o here means the. And we in English would not say the Jesus, okay? But a lot of foreign languages often put the word the in front of people's names. German does this all the time. And in Greek, just as we saw the word the in front of God in John 1.1, 1, 1, here the word the is used in front of Jesus' name because that's just something that they do in Greek that isn't done in English. So, legi afto oisus is saying, you know, saith unto him the Jesus would be the literal uh translation word for word, but obviously what it's saying here is Jesus saith unto him. That's what it's going to say in the English Bible. Jesus saith unto him. Now, let me just give you a little trick here. At the end of nouns and at the end of pronouns, sometimes you'll see this little mark right here that's a little, uh, it's called the yota subscript. And it's just like a little tiny yota that's written below the omega right here. And just a little trick for reading the Greek New Testament faster is whenever you see that little yota subscript, if it's at the end of a noun or the end of a pronoun, it's pretty much always going to be in the dative case, okay? Now, in the last video, we talked about the accusative case and the nominative case. The nominative case is the subject of the sentence. The accusative case was the direct object of the sentence, but also the accusative case is used with prepositions, sometimes. It's the object of many prepositions is going to be an accusative case also. Well, there's another case called the dative case. And the dative case is something for indirect objects. And it's also used with many prepositions. But an indirect object is what we would say in English, to whom or for whom. Okay. For example, if I said, I hit the ball, the ball is the direct object. Okay. I am the subject. But if I said, I hit Robert the ball, I'm not saying I hit Robert, am I? I'm saying I hit the ball to Robert. Robert is not the object of hit. If so, that would mean I were hitting Robert. Okay. If I say, if I hit Robert the ball, I'm saying I hit the ball to Robert. If I said, I wrote Robert a letter, I'm not writing Robert, I'm writing the letter. The letter is the direct object. Robert is the indirect object because he answers the question to whom or for whom, okay? So in this case, it would be to whom. Afto here means to him or unto him. It's an indirect object, so it's in that dative case. And I'm just saying that when you're reading uh, a Greek New Testament, it's pretty easy to spot the dative case in nouns and pronouns because when you see that yota subscript, it's kind of a telltale uh, sign there for the dative case or the indirect object or the object of certain prepositions is also in dative. So we've got legi afto, saith unto him, to him, dative case, Jesus, oisus. Okay, so legi afto oisus, ego imi iodos. This means I 
am the way. Now, the word ego, it gets the accent on the second syllable. See, that accent is over the omega. Ego, y mi, y o dos. Now, what's a way to remember the word ego? Well, it's sort of like our English word ego. That's where our English word ego comes from. And a person who has a big ego puts all the emphasis on themselves, right? Well, ego means I. So that's pretty easy to remember if you remember the word ego. So ego y mi, I am, y o dos, the way. Now, you'll notice that the word the up here in front of Jesus, o, and the word the over here in front of o dos, which is e, that they're two different, they're two different words, two different letters. Well, that's because in Greek there is gender, uh, male, female, or, or neuter, actually masculine, feminine, and neuter is how we say it. So this right here, isus, is obviously a masculine word, and then odos here is a feminine word, so therefore it gets a different word for the, okay? And again, we're using modern Greek pronunciation, so we're ignoring the breathing marks, which are no longer pronounced. So, how do you think we could remember the word odos? Because it means, I am the way, right? Ego, imi, iodos. Odos can be remembered by the word odometer, right? What's an odometer read? Well, how many miles you've traveled down what? The road. So, odos can be remembered by noticing its similarity with the word odometer, all right? Ego, imi, iodos. K, remember, remember the word K from the last verse means and. E, alithia, all right? Alithia means truth. So he says, ego, imi, iodos, k, i alithia. I am the way and the truth, i alithia. K, and, i zoe. And zoe means life, okay? So we can remember that by the word zoology, right? Or a zoo. What is a zoo or what is zoology? Well, it's the study of animals. Basically, it's the study of things that are alive, okay? So our words, zoo and zoology, come from the Greek word life, okay? E, zoe. So that'll help you remember that. Now, it's great to learn a verse like this in Greek if you're an absolute beginner because it's a verse that you probably already have memorized in English. And since you already have it memorized in English, if you forget what a word means, it'll probably come to you right away just by thinking about the English. So, let's go back to the beginning. Legi apto oisus, ego i mi i o dos, ke i alithia, ke i zoe. All right, so that's the first part of the verse. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Udis echete pros ton patera i mi diemu. All right? So let's go through this word by word. Udis means no one or nobody. All right? Udis ergete, and ergete means comes or, you know, cometh in the King James. No one or not anybody, nobody cometh. Udis ergete pros ton patera. Now, remember pros from John 1.1, 1, 1. but in John 1.1, 1, 1, pros was being used in a different way because in John 1.1, 1, 1, pros meant with. Well, the Greek preposition pros can mean with, but it can also mean to, toward, or unto, like you're going to something, you're getting somewhere, okay? And that's how it's being used here. But even though it's being used with a different definition here, it is still taking that accusative case, okay? with our word tone, okay? So it goes, udis ergete pros ton patera, to the Father, or unto the Father. So it's saying, no one, no man cometh unto the Father. Okay, now patera, obviously, is pretty easy to learn because it, it's not that different from our word father. And we have English words like paternal or paternity that can help us with uh, remembering this. Patera i mi diemu. All right, now this part's a little bit uh, tricky. But this, uh, these two words together 
mean uh, except or but by but by me. Basically, these two are the but, okay? The is the by, and emu is me, but by me. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So let me explain this a little bit, okay? First of all, you'll notice that this word right here has an apostrophe after it. This isn't one of those breathing marks at the beginning of words that we're ignoring, but this is an apostrophe after the word because this is a contraction. You know, in English we have contractions. Instead of saying cannot, we'll say can't and just C-A-N apostrophe T. That apostrophe is showing us that something's missing. You know, cannot is a longer word. We, we've removed something and put an apostrophe in its place. For example, I am, we'll shorten that to just I'm. And then we just put an apostrophe just to show that something's missing. Well, this apostrophe here is to show that something's missing because this comes from a word that is spelled delta, yota, alpha, okay? The a, which means by or through, okay? Well, the alpha is missing, right? Because we've shortened this, it's a contraction so that basically these two words can be run together as the emu, the emu. Just, you know, run them together. Instead of two separate words, they're contracted. That's what that apostrophe is telling us. So this by me becomes the emu, all right? But in a dictionary, this word would be spelled delta, yota, alpha, okay? The a. And so it's the emu here, by me. And again, the e, me, these two words together mean but, in the sense of accept, accept by me, but by me, all right? There's no other way but him. So uh, this word by itself, me, is our English word not. It's just a negating word that's used, okay? And then this e by itself uh, means if, okay? So if not by me. No man cometh unto the Father if not by me, but, but these together we would more, uh, we'd be more likely to translate it as, you know, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That sounds the way we talk in English, right? Instead of uh, e me the emu, all right? So this is a pretty straightforward verse, and the great thing about it is that a lot of the words in the verse, there are some tricks to help you remember them. Like, for example, the ego. We have the English word ego. Odos, we have the word odometer. Uh, zoe, we have the word zoology. Uh, when we look at uh, patera, we have paternal. So these are all pretty easy. Plus, emu, you've got an M in it. So it sounds similar to me, the word me. And so this is in uh, genitive case. So again, let's read the whole verse. Legi afto oisus. Ego imi iodos. Ki Alicia, ki Zoe, Udis, Echete, Pros ton Patera, I mi Demu. In the next video, we're going to learn about Mark chapter 1, verse 1, and we're going to learn about the genitive case.